Hello and welcome to the second Tutor to You online lesson on monetary policy. In this session, we are concentrating on quantitative easing or QE, and we're going to start by looking at bonds. So how do governments borrow money? Governments usually borrow by issuing bonds. They're also known as bills or gilts, but those tend to have a slightly shorter maturity date. So using the phrase bonds is absolutely fine in all your work and your exercises. A bond is effectively an IOU note. The government sells these pieces of paper, these IOU notes, in return for the money it needs to borrow. So the bond in itself represents a loan. Now the bonds can be sold on primary markets, i.e. directly from the issuer, in this case the government. So if you wanted to buy a government bond, you can buy one on a primary market, say for example with a 10 year maturity date. But let's say after two or three years you find you need the cash, you can then sell that bond on a secondary market. So it's sold on by you or the original buyer onto other buyers. When the bond actually matures and reaches its final date, the government pays the holder of the face value of the bond. So in other words, it's a little bit like that children's game when the music stops, whoever is the owner of the bond at that time, they get the face value of the bond back. We're going to look at some key terms. Face value, maturity date, coupon value, coupon date and yield. If you think you know these or would like to have a go at defining them, pause the video now and see if you can come up with some definitions. If not, let's go straight on and have a look at these key terms. So the, the face value is the amount that will be received by the bondholder when the bond matures. The maturity date is the date at which the government will repay the bondholder. Often bonds are two years, five years or mostly 10 years. The coupon value is the amount of interest that will be paid on that bond each year. The coupon date is just the date that the interest is paid and the yield is the interest as a percentage of the market price. So it's a percentage of the price that the bond sells at at that time, not the, the interest as a percentage of the face value. It's the interest as a percentage of the market price. Let's look at an example. We've got a 10 year bond here. Its face value is £1,000. So that's how much it, sold, it was sold for by the government on the primary market. The coupon value is £50. So the owner of that bond will receive £50 each year for the 10 years. At the end of the 10 years, then the government will pay the owner of that bond the face value, £1,000 back again. If the bond sells at its face value, then the yield on the bond is 50, the coupon value, divided by the market price at that time, £1,000, times by 100 to get a percentage, which gives you 5%. Let's say that the bond actually sells for £1,200. Then the yield is equal to the coupon value divided by the market price times 100, and that will give you a yield of 4.2%. Time to think, why might the market price of the bond be higher than its face value? Pause the video and have a discussion or a think and see what you come up with. Some reasons why the market price of the bond might be higher than its surface value, than its face value, beg your pardon. The government could have a high credit rating compared to other governments. In other words, it's considered a lot more trustworthy and a mo lot more likely to pay back its debts. So the bonds become very desirable, causing the demand for them to rise, which means that the price, the market price goes above the face value. 
Another reason might be that interest rates on savings accounts or alternatives and substitutes might be very low, making the purchase of bonds a much more desirable option. Now we want you to create your own example showing what happens when the market value of a bond is less than its face value. Try and work out the yield. Then we would like you to describe the relationship between the market price of a bond and its yield. Pause the video, have a go and join me in a moment. So, for example, Using the previous data, if the market price fell to £750 now, then the yield would be the coupon value £50 over £750 times by 100 to get a percentage gives you 6.7%. So here the yield has risen when the market price falls. So how would you describe the relationship? They are inversely related. As one goes up, the other goes down. As the first one goes down, then the yield goes up. Here's some UK data on 10 year bond yields, 1990 to 2020. So have a look and see what you can see. Overall, it's fallen from around about 11 and a half to 12% back in 1990, all the way down to about half to a third of 1%. Quantitative skill practice. Describe the data in the chart above. So imagine you are telling somebody on the radio exactly what's happening to this data. Give the idea of what's happened overall, where the big variations are, what the general trend is and whether it's volatile or not. Pause the video and have a go. We'd like you to try another exercise now. We'd like you to follow the link in this section on the online lesson to the strong bonds activity. And in that activity, we are going to ask you to practice writing an analytical paragraph about bonds, to conduct some calculations relating to, relating to bonds, and really to practice your wider knowledge of bonds.